during the colonial days the British used to play polo on this ground so the this place actually used to be their old polo ground where they were exercising their aristocracy <laughs> and at that time blacks were not allowed to come to this place so till when the independence was granted from the old parliament house then Dr. Kwame Kuma also stood on the same ground and made the first Ghana's independence speech. So that's why when he died and gone, 20 years later after his death, the same place has been converted to where his remains has been finally buried. So where we have the big bronze statue standing was the exact spot he stood and made the first Ghana's independence speech. So this is the first statue made for him when he died and gone. And the first one that he was portrayed in a southern tradition. His right hand and his forefinger stretching to a particular direction is now the slogan of his own political party, which is forward ever, backwards, never. never. And we also currently, the park is under renovation, unfortunately. The phone are not the phones are not working. Yeah, so we just have to bear with us. Um, these are horn blowers, and horn blowers they form part of the southern tradition in the southern part of Ghana. When you go to the chief palace, they are the praise singers. So when there is a deba and the chief is about to appear in the public, then they herald and announce his coming. So they are also here announcing the legacy and the coming of our first president. But in a real life situation, home blowers don't kneel down. We don't even see them anywhere water. They need to be stood up, barefooted. And traditionally, they take the lead and the king follows. But seeing them in this state is just a reference or a respect to our first president. However, water represents the internal life for our first president though he's dead we still believe he's still alive that's why the young pioneers from his own political party said Nkrumah never dies because he's dead his legacy still lives on so over here it is an internal homage that they are paying to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and far ahead we also have the drama the one also in a smoke with a traditional guitar and uh, these are culture we have in Ghana the south and the north in the olden days in the south, our forefathers used drums as means of communication that we call talking drums. Bringing those two quarters together to symbolize unity that makes this country one. So, over here, when you take a good look at the shape of the monument, the monument actually symbolizes the life and the works of our first president. You know, at the beginning of his political career, he was talking about a political unification of Africa. And aside that, he also initiated a seven-year development plan for Ghana. That saw some of the legacy that we can boast of today. For instance, the Volta River Dam. Maybe to take his entire life to achieve more for us. But unfortunately, his government was ousted in 1966. So that's the unfinished work or a truncated vision. But when you bring it in this part of our world and you take a good look at it, it looks like a trunk of a tree. So it is like those trees when our farmers, after their hard day works, when they return, they sit under it. And we call it a gossip tree. So he's also resting under a tree after his hard day works. But the tree is truncated here just to show the disappointment in his achievement. The black star. When we move to the other side, you see the black. The same star we have on our flag. And from the far end over there also, that's the black star. The black star actually represents the hope of black people all over the world. And the inspiration came from Dr. Marcus Garvey, eh? where the black star lies. Though he himself could not put his feet on the African soil, but when he died, the movement has already started. Already his wife, Jack Abigabe, was here in 1946 
to reconcile with the continent. Ten years later, the famous saxophonist eh, uh, Louis Armstrong was also here eh, to reconcile with the continent. The day our independence was declared, we have the civil rights activist, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was here, Jesse Jackson was here, later Maya Angelou also moved eh, certainly here for some time. And in 1961, Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois also moved to Ghana. He died and buried in Ghana. And in 64, Malcolm X, Stokika Michael, Muhammad Ali also made the journey. Even in the 70s, when Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, even his government was overthrown, Winston Pickett, Stephen Wonder eh, also made the, the trip. And about an, a month ago, Stephen Wonder came back and now He's a Ghanaian, and uh, his Ghanaian passport was granted to him, and uh, he celebrated his 74th anniversary in Ghana. Yeah, so the year that we received a massive return of our brothers and sisters was 2019, and that year was declared as a year of return. And that year, more than 300 brothers and sisters from the diaspora were granted Ghanaian citizenship including the wife of the reggae legend, Bob Marley. Yeah, so that event that took place on this ground in 1957, where for the first time Nkrumah stood here and talked about Africa personality, that event did not only threaten our relations with the diaspora, but also inspired the rest of the African continent. Ghana became the ground for the Africa freedom fighters. Some actually came to study the Ghanaian case. When they returned to their country, they sent the message. In their turn, they became leaders. For instance, the late Nelson Mandela, uh, Patrice Lumumba of Congo, Amika Cabral of Guinea-Bissau. Some actually also came in school in Ghana here, the life of the late Robert Mugabe of Zimbabwe, Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia, Kamuzu Bando of Malawi. Yes, yeah, so when they moved back to their various countries, they sent the message in their turn, they also became leaders as well. So this is not just a mere ground where our first president is being buried, but the ground of hope for African revolution. All right, so please, let's start.